understand Roth IRA distribution rules, first you have to know definition of qualified distributions. Without understanding of this, nothing else is important. Why is it important to know qualified distributions? Because those are the ones that are tax-free and penalty-free. In other words, you can take money out and you don't have to worry about paying taxes. Okay, how do you get your Ross distribution be qualified? Number one, the first Ross IRA was funded at least five calendar years ago. Calendar year, remember the keyword because IRS assumes that if you open a Ross IRA, say December 31st of 2000, you open it up on January 1st of 2000. And the second criteria is you met one of the uh, conditions below. One, at least 59 and a half years old. Two, you're disabled or dead, not very good. And number three, you use the money for first time home purchase. Again, nothing is as simple as it looks because that is a strict definition of what first home purchase is. It's, it's not what you think, but you can look it up yourself. And in addition to a, a strict definition, there's also a lifetime limit of $10,000. So that's not exactly very useful. All right, like I said, you, you would prefer to get to qualified distribution. So you don't have to pay income tax. You don't have to pay 10% tax penalty. And last week we were talking about the two separate central rules for that 10% uh, penalty. And I, I was just kind of trying to answer the question quickly. I did not make it clear. That's a differentiation between qualified distribution and non-qualified distribution. So, okay, you took distribution from Ross IRA, but you did not, you failed this criteria of qualified. Then what happened then? Uh, next slide. If you fail to meet a qualified distribution, then you first need to know what order will distribution be taken out of. The first one is your regular contribution, your annual 5,000 or 6,500, whatever the number. Then the amount can always be taken out at any time, at any age with no income tax, no penalty because it's your own money out. And the second is conversion or rollover contribution. This is where the 5% thing would, would go over that. And then the last is earnings on the above, earnings on regular contributions or earnings on conversion. And keep in mind now, there's no double taxation here. If you already pay tax on something, either making after tax contribution or making conversion contribution, you don't pay tax again on that number. However, there is a possibility you may have to pay 10% early withdrawal penalty on conversion. Why did I put that in? When I first came up with this Roth conversion, of course, attorneys and accountants figured out the loophole. So they said, aha, with regular IRA, if you take money out before you turn 59 and a half, you had to pay 10% penalty. So this converts to Roth IRA so that you, you don't have to pay 10% penalty. It didn't take IRS very long to catch that. So now they had this five year rules for under 59 and a half conversion contribution. And each one of them has its own five year clock. And if you, like you do a lot of backdoor and you got 100, uh, conversion contribution, then the rule is first in, first out. You know, I'm just going over quickly to tell you about the rules, but when you actually get to it, you need to sit down with a sweat tree or with pen and pencil and actually map it out. So it's not really uh, 
it's not too complicated, but it's not as simple. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, um, TurboTax would help, TurboTax or other tech software would help you um, deal with this. Mm -hmm.